The third point, which belongs uh, to such a Marxian state theory, is the question of democracy and uh, public discussion. Here, uh, very often, um, we have a debate that um, leftist, leftists criticize the democratic forms of the bourgeois state, uh, demand real democracy, finally real democracy, because democracy in, in bourgeois state is so limited and the uh, one. Conservatives often speak of too much democracy. Uh, they insist on a strong state uh, which has to find uh, quickly decisions and uh, we have too much obstacles for, for quick decisions and so on. So there is a question. What is the relation between democracy and uh, capitalism? Some uh, authors argue there is a contradiction. There is either democracy or capitalism, or maybe in a weaker form, they argue uh, the stronger the, the democracy, the weaker uh, capitalism, and also the other way around. I uh, don't share this opinion. Uh, I think democracy and capitalism fit very nicely together. Uh, democracy is exactly the method or the, the way in which this neutral state, this necessarily neutral state, gets knowledge of such a thing like uh, the capitalist class interests. As I stressed before, the capitalist class is consisted out of competing fractions. The, the capitalist class is a, is a class uh, which members always fight against each other. So there is the question, what is the, the common interest of this uh, class which uh, fights against uh, itself? It needs mechanisms to, to find out these interests, mechanisms uh, to, to create a balance between uh, different uh, interests. And historically, we can say the best, the most smooth method to do this job is really um, democracy, uh, a parliament, um, which is elected in free elections and not in, in some controlled elections, and also a free press, a free press where different fractions uh, can, can argue freely is the best method to find out this capitalist class interest. But this is not the whole story of uh, what the, the state here has to do. In capitalist society, we have subaltern classes. We have the, the working class, which is uh, economically exploited. Maybe we have splits of some other classes also. And these subaltern classes must, in some respect, agree to their subaltern position. When the subaltern classes don't agree to this position, we have a, a very fierce social battle. The state has to react with a lot of oppression. And uh, oppression uh, alone has big difficulties to, uh, to secure the rule, the, the domination, as we can see in a lot of um, dictatorial <coughs> systems. And it is not at all uh, very good, for uh, at least for a developed capitalist uh, system. So in order to use only oppression, the state, has, uh, the state needs mechanisms, needs processes to include the subaltern classes to produce a certain consensus with, uh, of, of the subaltern classes with their own subaltern positions. And again, free press, uh, public sphere, and a democratic uh, system is the very appropriate um, system to do this. Subaltern classes can articulate their interests and they can come into this mechanism of balance, balancing uh, certain interests, of course, under the dominance of the capitalist rule. Not because the, the capitalists um, 
uh, bribe the politicians or have too much influence just because of the logic of the system. The workers, they want to have higher wages. Okay, what is the method to get higher wages? <coughs> the capitalist companies need higher profits, then they can pay higher wages. In so far, you can explain to the workers, you also have an interest that our economy is flourishing. And this is very abbreviated, very simplified in, in my presentation, but this is the logic according to which a, a lot of um, economic debate is, is working. In, in Germany, we have for this um, a very nice example. In the 1800, uh, no, not 18, 1970s, the German Chancellor Helmut Schmidt, social democratic uh, chancellor, um, also now well-known, uh, famous, I think also beyond uh, the boundaries of uh, Germany, was attacked by um, leftists that he, as a social democratic chancellor, uh, provides policies in favor of capital. And he answered with a classical um, sentence. He said, the profits of today are the investments of tomorrow and the working places of the day after tomorrow. The sentence is not totally correct. You should say the profits of uh, today may perhaps lead to investments tomorrow and they will eventually lead to more employment chances uh, in the day after tomorrow. But basically, he was absolutely right. In a capitalist economy, profit is the center of uh, the working of the economy. When there is too less profit, then this economic machine is not working, and this has damaging consequences also for the rest of the society. So when you, not, when you are not against capitalism, that you don't see your task in fighting against capital, capitalism, then no matter what you prefer personally, you have to support profits. And when then, under this uh, presupposition, it is discussed how we can um, fulfill certain demands of the working class, certain demands of the freelancers, certain demands of the big companies, of the small companies, then we really reach the, the best in the sense of capitalist system. Not because someone is bribed or, or has too much influence, just because democracy and um, the discussions in the public sphere already uh, presuppose the capitalist system as something which is uh, taken for granted. And in this way, uh, democracy and, um, and the public sphere is not against capitalism. It is really the most smooth way to fulfill the, um, the political tasks in a capitalist uh, system. So when now critics um, ask for real democracy, when persons uh, say, yeah, uh, to vote each four years uh, for a new parliament, and uh, we cannot do more than this, this is too less, this is not real democracy, then um, I think I, I would give uh, to, to such positions two answers. If you just want to reform some political uh, institutions that, for example, that you can vote not only for um, the parliament, that you want to have uh, the possibility for a referendum about uh, decisive points. Of course, you can demand this, and it is not uh, unrealistic that uh, such changes will come, because they are totally inside the bourgeois field of, um, of politics. But when you really want to have an alternative to capitalism, then the demand we want real democracy is much too less. Uh, by, by some persons, this real democracy is just a, a kind of code name for another society. But when you want really to have another society, you must also demand this 
and you must attack and criticize the existing um, capitalist society. In so far, for, for such a fundamental critic, the demand for real democracy is not at all enough. Uh, the demand must be uh, to criticize capitalism, to try to overcome capitalism. And then in a non-capitalist society, this is important, uh, political conflicts will not vanish. To abolish capitalism will not bring um, uh, a society without uh, any conflicts. And for these conflicts, of course, one needs uh, certain institutions which we can say you need real democracy. But this is quite another cup of tea. To, to talk about uh, political institutions, institutions um, to come to decisions, to discussions in a non-capitalist environment is totally different from discussing political institutions in a capitalist environment. And as long as we have uh, a capitalist environment, the, the restriction of critic to political institutions is much, much too less. And in so far, I think when, when we have in mind this uh, political conclusion, then also the um, maybe abstract uh, considerations and um, theoretization of state theory becomes very uh, practical, very uh, political, uh, politically important, and uh, not only a kind of discussion for the academic uh, sphere, but also uh, a discussion for militants, for, for activists.